Attacking and blocking are the basic building blocks for the vast majority of the games on the market today. So in this video, we'll show you how to quickly and easily create a basic attack, defense, and input system for your game. For this, we'll simply need a rig character and three animations, idle, attacking, and blocking. We'll be using our wireframe fighting game training character, which is free on the asset store, which comes with several basic attack and blocking animations. If you'd like to download this character asset pack, we've placed a link in the description below. You'll also find a link to download the finished c -sharp script we'll create in this video. If you've created or purchased a rig character and don't have an idle attack or blocking animation, with an Adobe account, you can freely download some of the many motion capture animations they have available in their Mixamo site. So to begin, let's drag our rig character mesh into our hierarchy. With our character now in our scene, let's next create an animation controller. We can do this by right clicking in our project window, then going to create and finding animation controller. With our animation controller now created and named, let's go to our animator window by double clicking our animation controller. With our animator window now up, let's drag in our idle animation and let's next drag in our punching and blocking animation. Something to note, the first animation or animation state that's created within the animator is automatically assigned as our default animation state. Our default animation state is the first state that plays when our animation controller starts. However, if we started with the wrong animation when creating our animation controller, or we simply like to change our default state, we can do this by right clicking any of our states and selecting make layer default state. Additionally, we can also simply change our default state animation by clicking our state and dragging in or selecting a new animation under motion. Next, let's make a transition from our fighting idle to our punch state as well as to our blocking idle state. To do this, we can simply right click our state, select make transition, and then drag that transition to our finishing state. Let's now make a transition back from our punching and blocking state to our fighting idle state. For those unfamiliar with using the animation controller, by selecting our transition in the inspector, we can define the conditions that need to be met for our transition to be enabled. By default, our condition is set to has exit time. This simply means the transition will start once the animation is transitioning from is complete. If we uncheck has exit time, we can see that our transition needs at least one condition or has exit time needs to be enabled, otherwise our transition will be ignored. With that said, let's add a condition. To do this, we need to first do two things. One is create a parameter for that condition, and the next is to hit the conditions plus button within our transition. We can see if we hit the plus button before creating any conditions, we'll be given a warning that we don't currently have any parameters to create conditions of. In upcoming videos, we'll show you how to use parameters and transitions to create seamless punching and attacking combo systems. However, in this video, we'll simply create two parameters. So within our animator window, we want to find and click parameters. We want to then hit the parameters plus button and create a trigger parameter, which we'll call punching and a boolean parameter, which we'll call blocking. Let's next add our punching condition and parameter to our punching transition and our blocking parameter and condition to our blocking animation state. And we also wanna add our blocking condition and parameter to our transition from our blocking state to our fighting idle state. And for this condition, we wanna say if our blocking is false, then transition back to our fighting idle state. With that complete, let's now go back to our scene and test our animation controller before we continue any further. So let's select our character and in our animator component, we'll add our animation controller we just created. And let's then hit play. By selecting our character with our animator up, we can see our state as it's playing through our animation. Something to note, if you hit play and you notice your idle animation stops once the animation sequence is complete, you want to then find the animation you're using, and by clicking the parent game object, you want to then go into animation. 
and we want to make sure the loop time is checked. And then we'll click apply. If we now hit play, we can see that it cycles through our animations. With our idle animation looping, if we're in play mode with our animation window up, we can test our parameters by enabling them within our animator window. If we click our punch, we can see that we can enable the trigger. Additionally, if we set our blocking boolean variable, we can see that our player is now blocking. So we can now see that our animation controller and all of our animations are working properly. Let's next create the input system to remotely control the player punching and blocking. With our character controller now complete, let's begin creating the attack and defense input system. For this, we'll be using a combination of mouse controller and keyboard inputs, and for the sake of the video, we'll also use Unity's UI buttons as an alternate way of controlling our input. We'll start by downloading and installing Bolt. We can do this by going into the package manager and finding Bolt under your packages. If you don't see Bolt in your package manager, you can search for and find it on the asset store. And since Bolt is now a part of Unity, it's completely free for you to download and use in this or any other project or game. Using the package manager, let's download and import Bolt into our project. And using the setup wizard, let's set up Bolt to be used with our scene. With the setup wizard complete, let's hit close and begin creating our input system. And let's start by creating an empty game object, which we'll name character macro manager and then add a Bolt Flow Machine component to our game object. And let's then create and save a macro for our character input system flow machine. With our macro created, let's now open our graph, graph inspector, and variable windows. Before we begin, let's briefly go over the logic that we want to put in place. We want to use our mouse, keyboard, joystick, or on-screen UI buttons to either set our character's blocking boolean or to activate our character's punching trigger. With that in mind, let's start by creating two scene graph variables, which we can do by typing the variable name under Bolt Scene Variable tab. Our first variable will be for our character game object, and our second variable will be for our character's animator. And under our character's type, we want to make that a game object, and then use the character in our scene as its value. And since Bolt won't hold a variable type, if the variable doesn't contain a value, we can simply keep character animator type as null. Next, let's create a boolean variable, which we'll call is blocking, and then another variable, which we'll call attack key. Our attack key variable is going to be a key code type, and this will simply allow us to alter or adjust our attack key within the inspector. Lastly, we'll create two more variables one for our attack UI button, and one for our blocking UI button. With all our variables created, let's begin creating our graph. To begin, we want to use our start event to set our character animator variable with the animator component from our fighting character object variable. To do this, we can simply drag our fighting character object variable into our scene. Then, using a get component node, we can take that component and then place it into a set variable node for our character animator variable. We also want to make sure that we set our is blocking to false, and we can do that by simply using a set variable node and a boolean literal node and placing that in our graph after setting our character animator variable. With that complete, let's begin setting up our input. To do this, we're going to use our update. So let's start by outputting our update event to an input get key down node. Since this node returns a boolean, we'll need to output it to a branch node. And if that branch is true, we then want to use an animator set trigger node. For our trigger name, we'll use punching, which is the name we use for our parameter in our animation controller. For our animator input, we're going to use the value from our character animator variable. And for our input key, we're going to use the value from our attack key key code variable. Before we continue, let's first test our graph and make sure everything is working so far. So we can see at the start that our animator variable is set with our practice character, 
And when we press our spacebar key, which is our key code, our punching trigger is set. With that complete, let's now set up our blocking input system. For our blocking system, we want the character to block as long as we have a button held down. Let's start by creating our duplicating our update event, and we'll then create an input get button node. For our button name, we want to use the string fire2. And since our get button also outputs a boolean, we want to again use a branch node. And we want to say if that's true, we want to then set our is blocking boolean to true. And before we create our animator node, let's duplicate this node group. And for our new node group, instead of an input get button node, we want to use an input get button up node, since this button will return true when the player is no longer pressing our input button. And we also want to set our is blocking boolean to false. Let's next create an animator set boolean node. For our input animator, we'll again use our character animator variable, and we'll use our is blocking variable as its value. And for our name, we'll use blocking, which is the name of the blocking boolean in our animation controller parameters. With that complete, let's now test it in our scene. We can see when we press our Fire O2 button on our controller or our mouse that our player goes to our blocking position. Additionally, we can also see our is blocking boolean is being set within our scene variables. And if we look within our graph, we can see our graph flow while we have our is blocking input key down. With that complete, let's use the techniques we've learned to add this functionality to our attack and block UI buttons. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be the first to see this and many other tutorials, game development tips, and free game asset giveaways.